we're talking about where these uh, elements or molecules or ions or whatever get these uh, kinetic energy. And it turns out that at any given temperature, a small a, or big, I don't know, but some percentage of molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the uh, activation energy. We saw this with the thermal en energy distribution of molecules. Okay. So this is what it looks like. And the activation energy does have some numerical value that you can place on this thermal energy distribution. And all of the molecules that have enough kinetic energy or have more kinetic energy than the activation energy can possibly react. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, one of the things we're going to want to walk away with this is the relationship between activation energy and rate. Okay. So let's say this is the first activation energy. Okay. So EA1. Okay, and let's say there's another reaction that has a different activation energy. Let's say it's higher. Let's right, say it's right here, EA2. Okay. Which reaction would have the higher rate? The reaction with the first reaction with the first activation energy or the second reaction? Which one would have the higher rate, the first activation energy or the second activation? Sure. Yeah, you're not wrong. But we don't need to worry about that just yet. First one? Second one? Okay. <laughs> so which have, which one has more molecules that have enough kinetic energy? The first one or the second one? The first one. The first activation energy has all of these molecules, all these molecules plus all of these molecules. Whereas the second one, because it has a higher activation energy, less molecules, only these molecules, only the ones past the purple line have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. So yeah, it turns out that the uh, lower the activation energy, the higher the rate's going to be, because more molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. More molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. I think that's what I want to say. Okay, so, so if we increase the activation energy, we lower the rate. If we lower the activation energy, increase the rate. What type of relationship is that? Is that inversely proportional, okay? So activation energy is inversely proportional to the rate. But rather, the rate is inversely proportional to the activation energy. So rate is proportional to the inverse of activation energy. So we can say that rate is inversely proportional Rate is inversible, so the higher the activation energy, the lower the rate. So rate is rate is inversely proportional. That's how you read that. So the higher the rate, or excuse me, the higher activation energy leads to a lower rate because less molecules have enough kinetic energy. So that's one uh, relationship we wanted to walk away with this. Another one is temperature. Okay, so what if we were to um, increase the temperature of a sample? What are we doing to the kinetic energy of that sample? Increasing the kinetic energy. So what happens there is that the um, these orange 
when you increase the temperature of a substance, you're increasing the kinetic energy, and the thermal energy distribution shifts to higher kinetic energy. So what that happens is the whole thing will shift to higher kinetic energies. Okay. And so the orange line, that's at uh, T2. We'll say the red one is at T1, first temperature. And the orange line will be a higher temperature. So T2 is greater than T1. All right, so um, look what happens, okay? If we just compare, if we just look at one reaction, so we're just going to look at the first activation energy, Ea1, for the first reaction. Do If we look at the orange line, do more molecules or less molecules have enough kinetic energy? More, yeah. The Basically, we're, we're just the... Uh, the uh, area under this curve is representative of the percentage of molecules uh, that have enough kinetic energy. So at first, uh, in the red line, only the molecules underneath the red line have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. Now all of these molecules also have enough kinetic energy. So let's say, let's just make up numbers. Let's say for the red, temperature, okay, if we integrated this and we found, let's just say 5% of the molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. Now, with the additional ones on top of that from the orange line, let's say that, I don't know, 8% have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation energy. So, more molecules have enough kinetic energy to overcome the activation barrier, do you think that increases the rate or decreases the rate? Increases the rate. It does. It does increase the rate. If more molecules have enough kinetic energy, that means more uh, uh, molecules are able to react. So if we increase the temperature, we increase the number of molecules that have enough kinetic energy, and we increase the rate, what type of relationship is that? Directly proportional. So increasing the temperature does, in fact, increase the rate, and that is a directly proportional relationship. So we say that temperature, really we want to say rate, is directly proportional to temperature. And so we can show that as rate is proportional to temp. Okay, and it's actually for a couple reasons, okay? So one is that more molecules have enough kinetic energy. That definitely happens, okay? What were the other things that needed to occur for a reaction to occur? What was the first one? Collisions. They need to collide. If you increase the kinetic energy, if you increase the temperature, increase the kinetic energy of a sample, do you think they are going to collide more often or less often? More often, yeah. If you give them more kinetic energy, they're more likely to uh, collide. And so that also increases the rate. Just the sheer number of collisions will increase the rate as well. Then, of course, it's the numbers game. If you have more collisions, you have more collisions with an effective collision or more collisions with a proper orientation. So temperature definitely increases the rate of a reaction, increase in the temperature, temperature. Okay, which should make sense. Okay, we utilize this uh, 
phenomenon every single day of our lives. Okay? Have you ever, or at least I think you do, okay, let's test. Have you ever placed a food product into a refrigerator? Have you? Yes, you probably have. No? Never? Okay. An ice box? Okay. An ice box? Okay, why do you put things in the refrigerator? To preserve them? Okay, so what, what, what are you preserving them against? What could go wrong? Bacteria? Okay, bacteria could grow. What else? Spoils or the, yes, so they get spoil or bacterial growth, you know, other things could grow on it. Okay, both of those are chemical reactions, okay? Uh, spoiling is just the decomposition of the foods, the oils, the fats breaking down, um, and then bacterial growth. All bacteria are is little bags of chemical reactions, okay? And so if you want to stop bacteria from growing, you stop their chemical reactions. And you can stop or really slow down their chemical reactions by decreasing the temperature. And those chemical reactions don't happen as often. Okay. Uh, no, we're not. Uh, we're not reducing the activation energy. That would. That's intrinsic of just the reaction itself. So you're not messing with that by messing with temperature. You're only messing with the kinetic energy of the molecules involved in the reaction. Okay. And so. Um, Whenever I talk about thermal energy distribution and temperature dependence, I always think of my first year down in Florida, okay? It's been a while, but when I first moved down here, okay, I, I grew up in Pennsylvania, I lived in the Midwest for a long time, and I moved down here, started teaching in the fall, okay? Bright-eyed, wanted to change the world. Boy, <laughs> I don't know where that went, no. Of course I'm changing the world. Um, so, came down in the fall, started teaching in the fall, and, you know, about this time of year, Halloween's coming up, turns out I love Halloween, okay, who doesn't, okay, Halloween, you get candy, okay, it's even better now, I have kids, go get me candy, like, go. Walk. I'm not walking up there, go get me candy, okay, that's all, awesome. all right, so anyway, so I like Halloween, okay, I like pu carving pumpkins, okay, so up north, okay, in October, it's a lot colder than it is here, okay? And you can carve a pumpkin and put it outside, and it will last for weeks, okay? Not too much down here, okay? You have to do it like two minutes before, like, Halloween. Like, so I carve a pumpkin, I don't know, a week or two before they like, put on my little stoop. Came out the next day, it was like, oh, like goo of pumpkin juice on the soup. I'm like, oh, what happened? Genetics! <laughs> you know, I should have known that. That temperature just, you know, it just, that, that pumpkin had no chance, okay? So now, you can't, I, I don't even buy my pumpkins until like a week before, and then put them in the fridge, keep them safe. Okay. Yeah, inside, not bad, but you got to show it off. Okay, my neighbors is he? My scary cat. I think it was, I don't know what it was. All right, anyways. So yeah, temp.